Hey Julie, it's Jim. I wanted to take a moment and make a video for you. Sorry for the delay on this. I've gotten pretty uh, pretty backed up, but uh, I'm trying to get caught up now. So I really like shooting from the hip when I make these videos, and it's kind of a way to provide the most genuine and um, realistic feedback to, to hopefully give you some direction. So I, I love that you have this, this niche idea. I think this is really cool. Um, yeah, so okay, so when I land on your site, when, when anybody lands on your site, you have to, to be able to tell them very quickly what it is that you do so they can make a decision of if it's for them. So if you look at your Google Analytics and look at your bounce rate, meaning how quickly people leave your site, if they're leaving within just a few seconds, you're either pulling in the wrong traffic, so in other words, people that have no interest or need in baby diapers, or and th then thus they leave, or you're maybe pulling in the right traffic, but you're not conveying to them in a really easy way or, or quick way what it is that you do. They become impatient and just leave. All right, so, so definitely take a look at that and, and just see how you're uh, your bounce rate looks in your Google Analytics. Okay, so let me let me pause this for a second, kind of consume more of your site here. And I have to say, Julie, I'm I'm not really clear on what you do, and I, I I've even cheated a little bit because I read what you posted in Facebook before coming to your site. But this is my first time on your on your site, and I have several kiddos, and I, I've definitely you know used diapers uh, for my kids in the past. But um, so when I'm on your site, I'm like, well, okay, so it's like sample packs of diapers. Try all the diapers you want, more than 20 brands. So what I would love to see is a copy of like, so diaper dabbler, um, diaper variety packs. I mean, that that's good, but I, I guess I just, I don't fully understand what it is that you do and what the point is. That, that's just it. So I, I get that you send diaper packs or whatever, variety packs. What's the point? Am I trying to experiment with different diapers to see what I like the best, what works the best? Like, so what is the point of your brand, of your business and, and, the point I'm trying to make to you is that you've got to make that clear because I'm not really understanding. Um, but obviously you understand and you have a point. So you've got to convey that to me, to all the visitors, to your site, to explain what you do. Uh, design wise, I mean, I, I think this, this design is fun and playful. I, I really am a big fan though of a little bit of a different setup design wise. So if you go to my blog, blog.groovejar.com, click on this first link here, how to boost your conversion rate with a killer first impression. I do a deep dive in this article about how to make a really strong first impression. I, I go through some examples that are really good and examples that are really bad. If you look right here, this is an example of a site that is before the fold, meaning before I scroll, this is what you see. So it's one large what they call hero image, and then it has the logo and then other other um, links here. And it's obviously toy shades. You can tell it's a shade company that, that she's wearing the shades here. So I'm a big fan of having this whole area of real estate captured in one photo and you can explain so much of that in the photo you can have you know pictures that, that sell or or in other words like kind of a not pictures one picture that has enough in it that conveys what you do along with copy along with words that explain what you do so that, that's really important uh, something to consider like I, I get that you can't change design just overnight but something to consider but before you do that if you're not able to go down that path of kind of a redesign I would definitely recommend adding a tagline that just really explains what you do uh, wherever you need to put that, that's that's important. Or I should say wherever before the fold you put it, it's important to have it there. Okay, let me read. Interesting, Julie. So <laughs> we just kind of answered the whole dilemma here. So you answer what you do right here, but I didn't even read it. I didn't notice it. And I'm an example of, of any browser. Most people won't because they don't want to read all this. People generally have short attention spans, especially on the web, and they don't want to read stuff. So you've explained what it is that you do here, but that's just too difficult. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but people just won't read. So you've got to figure out a way to take this info and concisely bring it up here. Maybe you share a video here, you know, share some sort of concise wording on what it is that you do. You've explained it to me here now, and it makes sense to me, but I didn't see that. And if I don't see it before I leave, then I'm never really going to know what it is that you do. Uh, and also, these images are great and make more sense as well. So like, oh, okay. So that this makes more sense than this to me. So I just, I'm a, I'm a fan of that. So let's look at the specific product page. This is really important. Okay, so really high quality imagery is important. So there's several factors on a product page that, that make a big difference. The first one is, is really high quality imagery. I think this is fine. I like the, the images where you, you've probably seen it. You can scroll in. Um, in other words, like when you hover over the image, it zooms in automatically for you. Amazon uses that, for example. It's really good. So not a must have, but but I would definitely encourage working towards that direction because it really showcases like, I want to know what you wrote there, but I can't really read it. We hope this variety packs, I can barely make that out. And again, people, just overall internet viewers are lazy and they're not going to want to 
uh, try to strain to read that. So love the idea of zooming in. Okay. Um, yeah, so let me, let me read this copy here for a second. Well, in this area, Julie, I would make this larger, the, the text larger, larger font. It will just be easier to read. This is just too small. It, it's, again, we're trying to do everything we can to encourage reading. And this, I would make, I get that it's like block quoted or whatever, but I would make the text black so it stands out more. Again, encourage readability. Uh, that's going to make a huge difference. And just keep in mind too, like specifications are really important. You give all that here, but don't forget to be really significant in, in um, benefits. Like what are the benefits to your target client? Write to that one person, probably a her, right? Write to her and, and sell the benefits. How much she loves her baby. How does she feel when she puts a, a, a diaper on her baby that fits well? How does she feel if she, if she finds diaper rash from a diaper that didn't fit well? Capture those emotions and kind of work that in, massage that into your copy here. It'll make a big difference. But you've done a great job in, in putting uh, the sort of benefit copy ahead of the specifications copy. Most people don't do that. In fact, most people don't even have benefits copy at all. So you're ahead of the game there. Okay. Lastly, it's critical to have reviews um, on your page. Like if you think about it, when I go to Amazon, if a, if a product doesn't have reviews or if they have uh, poor reviews, I just don't buy it. And most people are like that. So I get that it takes time to get reviews, but if you can incentivize your clients to leave reviews for you in any way possible, that's going to make a really huge difference in your conversions. So, so having reviews on each of the product pages is, is critical. Super, super important. Um, and this, is this a review here? Yeah, that's good. That is. I like that the reviews that kind of look obviously like reviews, star ratings and that sort of thing. Uh, you've seen that. I'm sure there's there's um, you know, a lot of different ways you can implement that, but I'm a big fan of those. Um, okay, so while we're at it, are you on Instagram? It looks like uh, looks like that links just back to your page if you look at the lower left of my screen. If you're not on Instagram, I definitely recommend being marketing to these moms, right? There's lots of fun baby pictures you can send. I mean, think about all the creative things you could do on Instagram. There's also an app that I don't remember what it's called. You can search the Shopify app store for it, but it allows you to turn your Instagram feed into a sales platform. Like if you, this is just an example site, but you can see how with this watch, uh, they have the ability to add it to the cart through Instagram. So that's pretty sweet. So definitely focusing on Instagram would be uh, a really productive thing for you. Okay, let's go to your about page. Contact us, did I miss about us, okay. So I'm really a huge fan, Julie, of putting a picture of yourself here. People connect with people. They buy from people, not from brands, not from companies. And if you have an image of yourself here, especially a really a good quality, smiling, happy photo, um, it conveys trust, credibility. It conveys that you're going to stand behind your brand. So that's, that's really, really important. So I suggest that you do that here. Make the, the text a little bit bigger. It's a little bit difficult to read again. Small detail, but I'm telling you, it makes a big difference um, in readability and people's willingness to read it. And just, just telling your, your story here is good. Um, introducing yourself personally. But yeah, this is good. I, I like what you're, what you're saying here. It's good information. I would just make that personal connection. That's it. Great that you have a blog. That's good for SEO. I like that idea. Perfect. Okay, so one last thing. On your homepage, if you think about it, the most valuable thing that people bring to you is their attention. That's the most valuable asset that you have, right? They come to your site, you have their attention. If they leave and you don't have an email address from them, you have no way of following up with them. You have no way of working them down your sales funnel and they're just gone. So if you collect email addresses, you have a way to capture their attention again and, and work to convert them from just a lead to an actual paying customer. So I highly suggest you set up an email collection uh, tool, a pop-up. My company is the one I showed you on the blog. It's GrooveJar.com. And we have a pop-up called Groove Urgent that converts really, really well. It's a countdown-based pop-up. And we have a free trial, and then it's 39 bucks a month after that for all of the apps that we have. And we have a variety, and they're paired together. But whether you use our company, another really great one is Sumo Me, And then Privy is a great company as well. The point is to implement it on your site and work really hard to capture those email addresses, keep track of your, your conversion rate, and really work to the, once you have the emails to convert those people to paying customers by nurturing a relationship, sending them some emails and, and uh, working on getting them down that funnel. That'll make a big difference in your conversions. Uh, that being said, don't do any of that until you make some changes here and make um, the initial changes on your site where people are, are captivated and they understand exactly what it is that you do immediately. That alone will make a big difference and then you can kind of graduate to the other things. Okay, Julie, you want to be mindful of your time and not make this video too long. Please let me know if you have any questions. If you want to take a deeper dive on any specific subjects, I'm happy to give you a hand. Take care.